But even uh, different times throughout our daily lives, really. Um, granted, you know, most people think of silence as being a virtue just for uh, religious to practice. But uh, indeed, you know, religious will be held more accountable for their practice of silence or, or lack thereof. But um, well, silence is a, a great means of acquiring a spirit of prayer and disposing the soul to converse continually with God. God's not going to be talking to us if we're listening to rock music or, or the TV or, or the computer. Uh, seems like you can't go anywhere without uh, them playing music. And you know, like in the stores years ago, it was like elevator music almost, at least it, today it's just noise pollution. So we should all desire... To, to want to dispose our soul to converse continually with God. And that's why we need silence. Um, we rarely find a spiritual soul that speaks continuously. You know, um, all souls of prayer are lovers of silence. I think you need to bolt this thing down, that <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> um, you know, that's why it's called the, uh, the guardian of innocence, uh, the, the shield against temptations, the fountain of prayer. Uh, because uh, by silence, um, devotion is preserved. And I'm sure you've experienced this in some parish churches. You go there, you get there early for Mass to recollect yourself, to uh, place yourself in the presence of God. And it sounds like a school cafeteria. You, it's just uh, very distracting. I, I was talking to someone the other day, and it says, whenever they go to the church, they go to the cry room. <laughs> they're always in the cry room when they're at church because it's the quietest <laughs> place in the church. <laughs> they don't have any children, but they're always in the crater. <laughs> um, or, you know, after Mass, you try to give a Thanksgiving, and it's just, uh, you can't do it. So, um, by silence, devotion's preserved. You know, it's... Uh, Good thoughts spring up. Um, St. Bernard says, silence and the, uh, the absence of noise in a, a certain manner force the soul to think of God and eternal goods. And it, it's sad. I... I I met a, a former MIM -M member. She avoided retreats like the plague because they were silent. And it forced herself to look at herself, and she didn't want to do that. Um, it's not pretty. You know, we don't want to examine our conscience. People don't want to go to confession. Who wants to remember our bad choices? But, you know... I mean, the saints, they would, they would flee to the mountains, to caves, to, to deserts, just to get away from the noise, to find silence. And uh, some of them observed silence for, you know, 30, 40 years or, or more. Um, one saint, St. John the Silent, <laughs> he was surnamed, uh, gave up his bishopric, to uh, 
become a monk and observe silence for 47 years before his death. And um, all the saints, you know, even those who were not hermits were lovers of silence. Um, you know, just they realized how great the blessings that, that silence brings to the soul. Um, the prophet Isaiah says that uh, silence shall cultivate justice in the soul. For on the one hand, it saves us from many sins by destroying the uh, roots of uh, arguments. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's never an argument where there's silence. There's never detraction or resentment or curiosity that, uh, you know, these uh, just lead to gossip. Uh, and, uh, you know, on the other hand, the, the silence, it makes us acquire many virtues, just those virtues of not committing those sins. Um, you know, if we practice humility, when we let others do all the talking, that's, that's a way to grow in that uh, humility, um, that virtue. And uh, it's a great mortification not to, um, or by not yielding uh, to an inclination or a desire, you know, to, to s tell a certain antidote or, uh, or some, use some witty expression um, suggested by the conversation. Um, you know, we practice heroic uh, meekness by remaining silent uh, when we are unjustly criticized or, um, or offended. But on the other hand, you know, immense evils flow from speaking too much in the first place. Um, as uh, devotion is preserved by silence, so it is lost by too much talking. You know, however recollected the soul may be or, or may have been um, in prayer, if it, if it afterwards indulges in long conversations, it will find the mind distracted and uh, dissipated as if uh, it had not prayed at all. Um, if afterwards uh, it indulges in uh, in that uh, conversation, but uh, the uh, Holy Spirit tells us in the Book of Proverbs that uh, in speaking too much, we shall not fail to commit some fault uh, while. While they speak and prolong conversation without necessity, uh, certain people think that uh, they're not guilty of any defect. But uh, if they carefully examine them, themselves, um, they'll find some fault, you know, against. Uh, modesty, detraction, curiosity, or at least just superfluous words. <clears throat> um, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi used to say that a religious should speak only through necessity, but uh, actually everyone really should consider this advice. Um, <clears throat> She 
Jesus himself told us in the Gospel of Matthew. But I say to you that every idle word that men speak, they shall account for it in the day of judgment. Um, St. James talks about uh, the tongue in his epistle. He says it's a world of iniquity. For as a, a learned author remarks, you know, the greater number of sins arise from, from speaking or, or listening uh, to others. You know, I have to admit that uh, a lot of, of what we'll be saying is uh, f from this point forward is really intended for religious, uh, but you could very well uh, benefit <laughs> for uh, since you are secular, religious, um, living in the world, you know, so. Uh, you can apply it and put it into practice in your own life. Um, St. Alphonsus de Liguori wrote, uh, you know, how many nuns shall we see condemned on the day of judgment on account of having had little regard for silence? And what is m most to be deplored is that uh, the religious that uh, disputes in our mind by excessive contact with creatures and by speaking too much, we'll never be able to avoid, you know, defects. So it, it goes back to just what we were saying earlier about uh, avoiding um, all the unnecessary talk about others in, in gossiping. And... Uh, St. Ignatius Loyola said, if you want to know if there is fervor in a convent, all you have to do is see if silence is observed or not. Even our, our Lord speaks of, about silence to uh, St. Faustina in her diary um, and how important it is. I, you know, since we're getting a late start, I, I may have to... Uh, omit some of this since uh, a lot of it is for religious, but it's, it's also um, interesting. You like a lot of holy founders of, of religious orders that have uh, prescribed in their, their constitutions about the necessity of, of silence um, to their religious because they, they just knew how important uh, its, observ its observ observance is for fervor and, and that spirit of devotion. Uh, St. Basil insists on it in his rule for nuns, uh, not once, but you know, frequently. On, uh, and uh, St. Benedict commanded his monks to observe uh, continual silence, you know, just, just necessary speaking, not unnecessary speaking. And we could all be a lot more productive if we didn't talk so much, you know, that's, uh, or at labora, that's, that's what his uh, rule was. So um, experience shows that uh, monastery where silence is observed, uh, discipline is maintained, and where uh, silence is neglected, little fervor is found. So, um, you know, few religious become saints because few love silence. In, in many uh, monasteries, the, the rule of silence is prescribed by written rules and it's strongly recommended, but um, some of the religious uh, do not seem to know what silence is. Uh, this was a case in the St. Margaret of Castello. Um, 
At one time in her life, she joined an order of nuns, and they weren't observing silence, and she wanted to observe the rule as best she could. And all the nuns said, oh, she's, she's not uh, being, uh, you know, they, they, they interpreted her as not being very friendly and, and uh, avoiding uh, conversation. And it's just not one of the gang. And so the Mother Superior said, well, you know, if you don't conform, uh, you'll have to leave. So she had to leave just because they weren't observing their, <laughs> she wanted to live the rule and they didn't. Um, so it's just uh, mediocrity. You know, a lot of uh, people are, are happy with uh, their, their mediocre spirituality. They don't, they don't want to put forth too much uh, effort. Um, it's too uncomfortable, we, you know, getting back to the homily about uh, that mortification and death to self. That can get old, you know. If, and once you start, it's like you get these thoughts. And it's, uh, well, maybe I could give this up because, you know, you're making this sacrifice and that sacrifice. And then it just seems to never stop. And it's like <laughs> the temptation is just to say <laughs> enough. Um, but we can't, uh, we can never give in um, because we know uh, God loves a generous giver. So that's why sometimes you're tempted to think, well, am I, is, that, is that something I'm coming up with or is that from God? Well, St. Paul says any good that uh, we do is from God. The only thing that's from us is our sins. So, um, and silence is one of those little uh, mortifications that uh, is uh, very neglected uh, these days. So just during these uh, precious few days that you have of retreat to... Um, observe silence, endeavor to practice it as much as possible if you wish to keep yourself recollected with God. People say, oh, wouldn't it be nice if God told you what to do? Or, um, well, how can he get a word in edgewise if... if <laughs> There's constant noise. Uh, God speaks to us in silence. So, um, if you wish to keep yourself recollected and free from distractions, um, observe silence. Uh, and if you cannot do it for your own benefit, the love of God, the supernatural charity, at least try for, for the sake of your fellow retreatants. Um, and it's going to be the hardest for me because um, it's been years since I've seen you, and I'd love to sit down at a meal and carry on a conversation. But uh, we'll let Bishop Sheen do the talking during the mills. Um, so it's a sacrifice. So I have to practice what I preach, as hard as it may be. Although I'm technically I'm not on retreat, but for your sake, I'll I'll try not to disturb uh, your silence. Um, So, um, St. John Chrysostom would say, you know, why should we speak when it is more useful, you know, to be silent? 
I mean, the only time we should speak is if it's going to be more, more useful. Um, they say silence is golden, you know, except when it's yellow. Sometimes we remain silent when we shouldn't remain silent. Uh, if the truth is being attacked, we have to speak. Because if the truth is being attacked, Christ is being attacked. Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the truth just isn't some thing, it's someone. So, so there are times that we do have to speak. Um, so St. John Chrysostom would say either remain silent or say what is more profitable than silence um, and uh, So there can be a rapid progress in divine love through the practice of silence. Um, before speaking, you know, we should uh, consider whether... Um, what we intend to say could injure charity or modesty or, or someone's character. And, you know, even if it's true, <laughs> it doesn't need to be said. Um, that's called detraction. You know, just you don't have to broadcast people's sins. Um, St. Paul says the only the good things people need to hear, things that are going to help them. Like I said earlier, you know, we need to be that light, a source of, of hope and encouragement to others. Not building up the kingdom, not tearing people down. You know, our sins tear at the fabric of the mystical body of Christ. And people say, I'm not hurting anyone. Yes, there are people dying in wars on the other side of the planet because of our detraction, our sins. Our Lady of Adam said, war is a punishment for sin. So, and we're all sinners, so we do hurt uh, others. You know, examine the, the motive that uh, impels your speech. Um, for, you know, it sometimes happens that what a person says is good, but um, their intentions may be bad. Uh, they speak either to appear spiritual or, you know, to uh, acquire a, a reputation, you know, for talent to impress uh, others. Um, we examine to whom we speak. Whether, uh, is it someone in authority? Or, you know, either um, ecclesiastical or civil or an employee or employer to uh, companions or, you know, to inferiors. Uh, also, whether it's, it's, if it's in the presence of others who may be scandalized, you know, by what we say. But I, I think of if someone's going to be scandalized by what we say, we shouldn't say it. Uh, sometimes you have to you talk to uh, talk about important matters, or if there's something that 
needs to be corrected and that's going on, well, you know, you just, you don't need to let others hear that conversation. Um, we just must never forget, you know, the importance of our good example. And uh, that's why we have to be those lights shining in the darkness. Um, you know, recreation is needed. It's always a, a proper time for relaxation, but you know, we can endeavor as often as possible to speak of something that has a reference to God. You know, let us speak of the Lord Jesus, St. Ambrose says, um, who has an ardent love for another is always speaking about them. They, uh, they who speak little of Jesus show that they have but little love for Jesus. On the other hand, you know, if it happens that uh, good people, after speaking on divine love, feel more fervor than, than after mental prayer. Um, they have to examine their uh, devotion and just because, you know, our, our prayer, our devotions, they're all means to an end. They're not an end in themselves. At the, uh, at the conversation of the servants of God, says St. Teresa, of Jesus, Jesus is always present. And um, concerning this Father Gisolfo of the, the Congregation of Pious Workers relates a, a memorable example uh, in, in the life of the Venerable Father Anthony de Colelas. Um, he says that uh, Father Constantine Rossi the master of novices saw one day two of his young disciples conversing together, and with them a resplendent young man. And the master of novices was surprised that these, these two novices, whom he regarded as most uh, exemplary, should speak to a stranger, you know, without permission. He therefore asked, you know, who was the young man whom he had seen? Uh, conversing with them. And uh, I said, there wasn't, any, there wasn't anyone else uh, conversing with them. And uh, afterwards, he, he learned that uh, they were speaking of Jesus Christ. And he understood that the person whom he saw in their company was their savior. Um, so except for in the hours of, of recreation and other extraordinary occasions, you know, such as uh, attending the sick or in uh, consoling someone in tribulation, it's always better to be silent. Um, I mean, you're, you're not monks and you haven't taken a vow of silence or anything, but... Um, We'd be amazed at how many uh, unnecessary things <laughs> we say uh, throughout the day. Um, the religious in the order of St. Teresa said that it's, it's better to speak with God than to speak of God. But when obedience or charity obliges you to speak or to have contact with others, you must always endeavor to find some 
quiet time. So, so just let us remember that uh, the time given us is not to be spent unprofitably, you know, with, with loose, uh, useless um, chatter. It's to be employed for God, and uh, it's to be used for acquiring merits uh, for eternity, and uh, we'll be talking about that in our next conference. So, um, as hard as it may be, we'll try to do our best to have a, a silent uh, retreat and have that time to reflect, you know, to come up with a, uh, a battle plan because we are all at war whether we want to be or not. Uh, you, you notice the... Uh, Theme of the retreat, uh, spiritual weapons for spiritual warfare, and um, silence is one of those weapons. You know? So let us ask Our Lady to help us be silent so that we can reflect on uh, our battle plan for reentering uh, <laughs> the battleground. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Mother of the Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.